Today I'd like to provide our daily update on COVID-19 testing and hospitalizations and share some details around our strategy to assist nursing homes across the Commonwealth. With respect to testing, Sunday's report recorded 9,255 tests conducted in Massachusetts. The number of new represents a 17% positive test rate on the tests that were processed and released yesterday. We've now conducted about 236,000 tests. We have about That's a small increase over the previous day. As we've said before, a big part of our assumption about social distancing and essential business operations and stay-at-home advisories was all about taking the verticality out of the peak, um, the run up to the peak, and we clearly have done that. Um, we flattened the curve, but the flatness of the flat curve basically means it's been riding up like this for a while. It seems to have plateaued depending upon which part of Massachusetts you're in, and then the hope and the expectation is it will start to fall. But it will probably fall slowly the same way it ramped up slowly. Um, currently, about 7% of those who test positive require hospitalization statewide. The state's hospitalization rate has remained relatively stable, somewhere in that 7% to 10% range uh, for the past week or so. Massachusetts hospitals, I think as everybody knows, significantly increased their bed capacity and now have about 18,300 beds available across the state, including the temporary field hospitals. 56% of those beds remain available to patients. And I do want to point out that on the call, we do a daily call with hospitals here in the Commonwealth, um, and I do want to point out that several of them said uh, that they were seeing uh, an increase in some of the activity that did not involve COVID-19, um, which we view as a positive sign. As I said last week, uh, the folks at Bay State Medical Center um, last week had about 150 COVID-19 patients in their hospital. They also had 400 people who were there for other reasons. Um, I think the numbers across our hospital community would be relatively consistent in the sense that they continue to do many things for many people that don't have anything to do with COVID-19. And while we pay a lot of attention to this data because it's critically important to our ability to make sure that we can deal with uh, the COVID-19 population as that population surges and plateaus, um, we continue to have significant capacity across our healthcare and our hospital system. And if people are sick, uh, they should reach out to their clinician. Um, if they're deeply concerned about their, um, their health status, they should definitely go to the emergency room. There are people there who will treat you uh, and take care of you. 56% of our beds remain available for patients. And as of yesterday, we've delivered over six and a half million pieces of PPE, which includes masks, gloves, gowns, and ventilators that have been distributed to organizations, healthcare workers, first responders, and others. And we continue to aggressively pursue all supply chain avenues with respect to that. With respect to nursing homes, Massachusetts has unfortunately evolved into a national hotspot for coronavirus. Similar to other states, nursing facilities have been hard hit by this insidious virus that's particularly tough and lethal for older adults. In total, there are 386 nursing homes in Massachusetts, 255 assisted living residents, and 93 rest homes. There are approximately 38,000 residents in nursing homes, 16,500 residents in assisted living facilities, and approximately 3,000 in nursing homes. To date, 10,031 residents and staff working in long-term care facilities have tested positive for COVID-19 in approximately 300 facilities. These facilities represent about 56% of the state's total COVID-19 deaths. The numbers are tough to comprehend, but they illustrate the lethal grip COVID-19 can have on seniors, and especially on those with underlying health conditions uh, here in the Commonwealth. 
And obviously, our deepest condolences go out to the families, loved ones, and staff who have been impacted by this horrible virus. Our command center has a dedicated team that's focused solely on supporting long-term care facilities. The nursing home industry makes up an entirely uh, privately owned and operated collection of providers. And while they must follow state and federal guidelines, there's a wide range of variance on the way homes operate. Early on, our administration implemented a series of regulations, including strict restrictions with respect to visitors and screening guidelines for staff. The Department of Public Health has been assigning an epidemiologist and nurses to support the staff who are currently working directly with residents when an outbreak occurs. On April 7th, our administration announced the launch of a mobile testing unit for long-term care facilities through the Massachusetts National Guard. This resource significantly expanded testing for residents and staff with minimal disruptions in care delivery and service. To date, the mobile testing unit has conducted testing at more than 400 facilities, including nursing homes, rest homes, and assisted living residences, and they've completed a total of over 18,300 tests for staff and residents at those locations. The Guard's done a tremendous job so far and will continue this work to reach as many facilities as possible so that we can get the best information about where the virus is present. As needed, the state has stepped in to assist nursing facilities to respond to the pandemic. This includes the aforementioned expanded mobile testing, robust PPE distribution, crisis management support, rapid response clinical teams, and the activation of a nursing home family resource line. To help address staffing shortages, we launched the long-term care portal to help facilities match with available staff and funded a signing bonus for those who signed up through this portal to get hired. We also developed a three-pronged approach to expanded capacity for COVID-19 dedicated nursing facilities. Depending on the circumstances, we've also established fully dedicated COVID-19 facilities, opened empty, empty facilities to support COVID-19 residents, and created dedicated COVID-19 wings within facilities. And while that may not seem like a very long time ago since we introduced many of these supports, we've continued to discuss the issues and concerns of the nursing home industry and the long-term care community with our folks at the command center and have learned a tremendous amount about the current challenges that facilities continue to face when managing COVID-19. And today we're announcing new measures, including an additional $130 million available for nursing homes. This is the second round of $130 million, which comes on top of the $130 million that we announced on May, April 15th. We're also making additional assistance available to help address staffing shortages as well. The new funding will be made available on May 1st to help pay for more staff, implement state-of-the-art infection control, cleaning services, personal protective equipment, and other support services. These funds will be allocated to nursing homes that are meeting a benchmark for certain criteria to ensure these privately operated facilities are working as safely as possible. In addition, we're boosting additional assistance for temporary staff support, including clinical response teams, of 120 nurses and certified nursing assistants that can be deployed in teams to facilities in emergency situations. On the ground crisis management support from export, experts and deployment of the National Guard to help with logistical, environmental and other support. This is in addition to the mobile testing services they're already providing. These new staffing resources will be available for all nursing homes. Our administrations work closely with the Massachusetts Senior Care Association to create a centralized infection con control command center utilizing experts from Hebrew Senior Life and other providers. They will provide direct infection control support to facilities that need help. The Commonwealth's 386 nursing homes come in all shapes and sizes. They offer different levels of care and provide support for their residents in varying stages of health all the way through to end of life care. Nursing homes have a pressing obligation to provide the best care they can for many of our most vulnerable and fragile residents. The introduction of any illness, but especially a virus like this, can be lethal for, el for our elderly and challenging for staff and caretakers. This would be true for the flu or the common cold, but it's been significantly amplified by COVID-19. 
You've heard me refer before to COVID-19 as an invisible enemy, one that still has leading epidemiologists and infectious disease specialists struggling to understand it. And as I said earlier, our nursing homes have been hit especially hard. Once COVID-19 gets into a facility, it spreads rapidly and in many cases can be undetected for days. I'm sure you all recall that we talked earlier this year about a nursing home we tested that had no symptomatic COVID-19 residents and with 98 tests, 51%, 51 of the 98 we tested came up positive. This requires everyone to be more vigilant about staff and other people working in these facilities. In many cases, staff interact with several residents daily to do their jobs. It makes controlling the disease that much harder and it also demands a new level of infection control and staffing requirements for our nursing homes so that they can create the safest environment possible. This of course is not easy to do, but it's expected, required and necessary. So with this new funding, we're also putting in place a set of mandatory criteria for nursing homes that operators must adhere to. Some of these requirements include testing all staff and residents for COVID-19, adherence to a 28-point infection control checklist based on Department of Public Health and CDC guidance, meeting PPE requirements, staff requirements, and clinical care requirements. Facilities will be audited to make sure they're meeting these requirements and providing the safest possible environment for some of our most vulnerable residents. Clearly protecting our most vulnerable citizens in nursing homes, rest homes, and assisted living residents has emerged as among the greatest challenges we face in our fight against COVID-19. This highly contagious, invisible virus has proven to be most dangerous for people over the age of 70 and those with other pre-existing health conditions. This is complicated for facilities where several residents live in close quarters and require attentive care from their providers multiple times a day. This dangerous equation has now resulted in over half of the Commonwealth's COVID-19 deaths. But we will be as aggressive as we possibly can be, working with our colleagues in the long-term care industry to ensure that we're taking all the necessary precautions and providing the resources that are necessary to get this job done. We here in Massachusetts, as I said earlier in my remarks, are still in the surge and very much in the fight against COVID-19. Lieutenant Governor Polito and I continue to be inspired by the determination and perseverance we see from our residents and the commitment of our frontline healthcare workers and first responders who are out there doing the job every day in the fight. We also want to thank the nursing home staff that work diligently to care for some of our most vulnerable residents. And on this one, I can speak with personal experience, both for my mom, who fought Alzheimer's alongside my dad for 10 years, and for the care that's been, and support that's been provided to my 91-year-old father. I'd also specifically like to thank Tim Foley and the healthcare workers at 1199 for working with us to support nursing homes. We will keep the fight up all the way to the end, knowing that we'll come out the other side there will be better times and brighter days. I would ask everyone, as difficult as it may be, to continue to stay at home unless you need to go out, to practice the social and physical distancing that's made such a difference in flattening the curve here in Massachusetts, and to continue to wear a face covering if you can't be distant from others wherever it is you go.